Right, so first hole is a par four. I think it's about 305, 310 yards. Down the hill, tiny bit of a dog leg to the right. I can actually see the flags and we've got the theme park in the distance. I can see one of the roller coasters of as well, which is probably from where you guys are right behind me. Wind's howling off the right today, quite a strong breeze. So I'm gonna just try and hit this down the left-hand side, hopefully, or sorry, down the right-hand side of the, the fairway. Hopefully the wind will take it back. This is the first swing out of the car. So keen to see what happens and see if we can hit a good shot to start. Oh, and we absolutely have ripped it. I should just hit it out of the car all the time. Beauty, absolute beauty, down the middle, perfect. So just hit a good tee shot to start. So let me tell you a little bit about this golf course. It's a par 71, about 6,250 yards off the back. The tees we're playing from today, just have a bit of fun, about 6,000 yards. Now I haven't played here for about six years, but I remember it being just a really friendly, open golf course. Great for golfers of all abilities. You can make a score if you hit some good shots, but there's definitely some spots you don't want to miss in. I think there's a couple of fantastic par threes on the back nine. I think they're 12 and 15, if I remember rightly. So make sure you stay tuned for them as well they're absolutely stunning we've also got pepper pig world which is a theme park near to where i live just in the background so you might hear a couple of roller coasters and kids screaming on those roller coasters in the background i can promise you it's not my golf that's doing that right i'm just coming up to my ball let's hit the second shot let's see if we can start with a good score so i've absolutely hit that into position a guys like straight out the car i'm absolutely buzzing with that we've got 85 yards now down the hill there is a slight dry ditch i think cutting across here that we need to carry the flag as you can see the wind's howling off that right hand side so expecting it to move it so i'm probably going to go at the flag and just hope the wind moves it into the fat part of the green 85 yards i've got a little 54 degree wedge we're in a little clover patch here go a little go a little oh it's just chased onto the front it's actually really good now i've got a little bit lucky there so left myself about eight feet here just down the hill for birdie on the first i am someone who would putt with a flag out from this side of distance but when you're on camera it's always good to keep it in just to help you guys see the hole a little bit better I can only see so much from the previous screen. Right, we're going to tickle this down the hill, see if we can hold it. Oh, nice little effort. Par on one. We'll take that. Right, really good start there. We've got a second hole is a par five, 517 yards off these tees. It is actually down the wind. We've just turned 90 degrees from that first hole. I'm not driving the ball that great lately. So this is quite open for me. I'm hoping we can hit a good one down this hole. Just a little bit down the left-hand side. Hope it stays out of the thick stuff. Yeah, it's miles short of that. It's fine, it's only just off the fairway, bounding down there. Absolutely take that, not a bad shot at all. So we've got 256 in on this 517 yard hole. I think I'm just gonna try and hit a seven iron out of this first cut, try and just chase it down there, maybe leave myself somewhere in the region of like 100 yards into this green, try and take any little bit of trouble that's around the hole out of play. Definitely not my best strike, it's come out quite low, but it's dead straight and it is bounding down there and it's achieved the objective. So it's not a bad layup, it's still actually rolling. Yeah, we'll take that. So incredibly, because again, we're downwind and because of how firm the conditions are today, I've actually managed to hit that seven iron 200 yards total. It wasn't even a great strike out of that first cut of rough, came out quite low, but that just allowed it to chase on. So what I'm gonna do here for my third shot I don't fancy putting this up in the air because I think it's going to be like a 30 yard shot and trying to judge the distance. So I think I'm just going to try and hit a chip and run from 50 yards, just thinking anything sort of 30 yard distance is probably going to roll down there. So I've got a little seven iron. Let's see what happens. Got to go a little bit, not hit it hard enough. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Get on that front edge. Oh, it's just a yard off the front edge. I probably didn't catch it that cleanly, but I think it's the safe shot here. We've had a par on the first, chance for a little up and down, par on the second, we'll take that. Sit up, settle. Oh, I've absolutely raced that. Yes, really happy with that. Nice little two putt from the edge. Nice five, par, par start, come on. 
Right, so next up's the third par three, the first of the par threes. If I'm honest with you, probably what I remember being the best part about this course is there's four or five really, really good par threes. Probably not the prettiest one out of all of them, but straight away hole, there's only a bunker if you really miss it down to the left. I would normally hit a, uh, I think it's 152 to the pin. I would normally hit a seven iron if I was playing that normally, but we're still down the breeze. We're playing the same direction as the last hole, albeit there's some trees behind us. But I'm also conscious that on that first bounce, it does seem to be bouncing on. So I'm gonna hit an eight and see what we can do with that. Oh, you've seen the good for two holes. There's the bad. Oh, I've seen it come down. It's ho absolutely honking. It's in the trees on the right-hand side. It was good while it lasted, right? Oh, my God. So unfortunately, after not finding the first one, I just can't believe I didn't find it when I saw it down. And then that shot shape being in my head on the second one, which we then almost shanked down here. It's time to hit a good shot with my third, fourth, sorry. Chase up, keep going, keep going. Just been scared of how firm they are and just hit that a little bit soft. It's a little bit of a shame because it started so good. My best first two holes, I think, on camera. And then the third is one of my worst. We've got to try and two putt this and get out of here at worst with a six. It's got to go. Thank God for that. At least we made a six, nothing too disgusting. A second ball four, it was disgusting, wasn't it? Yeah. So the fourth hole is about a 390 yard par four, just dog leg slightly to the right. There is a mound on the right hand side that kind of acts as a bit of the dog leg. We've got some thick grass down the left hand side. Looks like it's a bit thick on that mound as well. So I'm just gonna try and hit a five wood. The wind again is coming off the right. We're playing the same direction as we did for the first. And this is the thing about weekend tour pros, guys. There is no second takes on this channel. You've just seen me hit two great pars, and then you've just seen me hit a terrible tee shot, a terrible second attempt at that tee shot, and make a very, very ugly six. But let's see if we can just reset and hit a lovely five wood down this hole. And we absolutely can. That is bullet straight down the middle. Why did that not happen with an eight iron, right? So 165 left in after that tee shot. So yeah, we probably hit it 210, 220 with the rollout, which is I'm absolutely happy with actually, especially after the last tee shot. The next question is, can I actually hit an iron shot now after what happened on the last? We've got 165 in, the wind's actually coming into, probably from like two o'clock into off the right now, but I still think it's a seven iron just because I think it's gonna land and roll. The pin is at the front and it looks like it's front right. So I think we can go sort of at it. And then if the wind moves it left, so be it. And hopefully it will just chase up there. That's a, such a good reply. If it's the number, it's really good. Oh, it's just a little bit short. The wind really has held it up. And it maybe has just caught the first cut and just not rolled out as much as it would have done if it hit the fairway. But I'm really happy with that strike. It's amazing how much wind is up there today. We've hit a seven iron already down the wind, not very well out of the rough, and it's obviously had low spin on it. And it's just bounded down the fairway 200 yards on two. We just hit one equally as good, if not better, into the breeze from 165 and it's come up 10, 12 yards short. I'm also in what looks like just a little bit of a depression here. So I've got to make sure I get a good strike on this. I've got a little nine iron, I'm just gonna try and play it as a bump and run and just hopefully it will just get out of this thick stuff and just chase up there. Just like that, settle. Oh. So fifth hole, 357 yard par four, but it dog legs quite significantly round to the right. And there's a mound over there. I've got a feeling there's a pond or some sort of reservoir over there. So I don't think you wanna to go too far right and the grass looks quite thick. And although it's gonna give me a longer second shot in, there is a 150 post right in the distance out to the corner. And I feel that's the line. We are into the wind off this tee. So if I get this out there, 180, 190, and it gives me some sort of shot in, I'll take it. It's the sort of hole where off the tee, I'm stood here at the moment thinking I wouldn't mind a five on this hole. 
I know that sounds a bit negative, but it's just sometimes you've got to feel that way if you're not used to the hole and not sure of your shape. It's a little bit right of where I wanted it to be, which is going to help me actually. And it's probably absolutely A1 position now with a little bit of luck. So really happy with that drive. The corner was around there, actually like, as you can see, one yard into the rough, just as the rough is there on the corner but absolutely further down here than I thought. We've actually got 142 into the pin and the wind just feels like it's swirling around this part of the golf course. So it feels like it's maybe just behind my back ever so slightly, which I thought it'd be more maybe coming from sort of seven o'clock. I would hit an eight iron all day here normally, but again, just based on how firm everything has been and the fact we're coming out this little bit of fluffy rough, we might get a flyer. I'm gonna hit a nine, just remembering what I thought to myself on the tee, try and miss this green front right, take that bunker out of play give ourselves a long two putt and see what happens. It's a great strike, it's just a bit too far right. It probably, oh yeah, it's long as anything. It's really flown out of there. It might actually just be over the back right. I genuinely can't believe what's happened here, guys. That pin is over there just through this gap. We're blocked out by this big tree that's a branch of this tree that's sort of broken down and stuck here and I can't move it. And that seven iron, sorry, nine iron, because of where it's bounced, it's carried like to, well, sorry, rolled out to like 160, which is a mixture of how firm these conditions are. And that obviously was more down the wind. I've just got to try and get this out of here and somehow make five. That's kind of my view. Stop, 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 stop. This is now a tricky little chip because we've got a little bit of a slope and so little green to work with. And, any sort of up and down from here I would absolutely take. Just got to get it out of here. Settle. Okay. We'll take a bogey. We said that off the tee. Right, 193 yard par three because the pin is right at the back there. This is the toughest of the par threes. And it just requires you to hit a very good golf shot. Bunkers protecting the right hand side, long grass down both sides. I don't want to hit the five wood because it feels like it, if the wind dies, it could be long, but it feels like it's the only option I've got here. So going to hit it and hope for a good one. Oh, get out of those bunkers. Just tugged it down the right definitely straight into the sand. Nearly carried this bunker with what just a yard we pitched there from being over it and probably pin high chipping across quite simply. But now I'm in a position where as a left-handed golfer, I don't really feel like I've got a stance. It's not the biggest bunker lip to clear, but I'm not the specialist bunker player either. So not sure what to do here. The foot feels a little bit closer to the ball than I would like. Let's see if we can just make some contact. I've chipped it out a little bit too clean and tugged it and we're over the back. Not going to lie, feeling one and a bit par threes in that they are beating me up today. I know I hit a bad shot on the first one, but then that's a little bit of brutal luck on the second. We're absolutely short sided here. Ball slightly above my feet. We've got 75% of it's thick grass to get through. So I think we're going to be trying to get this to pitch on the green and just roll out and just do our best to have a 6-10 footer for bogey. Stop, stop, stop. I've played that like absolutely brilliant, but it's just come out with no spin. So I've just paced it out and it's about 24 feet up the hill. And based on what the chip did, it should turn from my left to right. So the opposite way around for you guys as it goes up this slope. Ah. Oh. That is an unfortunate five. So hole seven, par five. It's not the longest one actually off of these tees, 466. So by far not the longest. Tree line just curves away around. So you can't miss this left. There's so much room right. It's the second hole that actually runs down the right hand side. So there's a bunker on the right stopping you from bailing out too much. It's about 200 to carry, but we are wind into the same direction as the last hole. So from my perspective, Anything that's kind of towards that bunker will open up the hole and hopefully give me a shot in. Let's see what we can do. Just stay there. It's a great hit. It's just got to stay out that bunker. 
I think it's just carried it, just. So we actually carried that bunker and trickled out another 30, 40 yards. We've actually hit a really good driving stretch into the wind. The hole's over there, but I'm just blocked out by loads of trees and the gap that I could play through is so small or I chip out sideways. Because the second hole runs alongside, there's a part of me just thinking, try and hit a seven iron down that left-hand side, even if we can advance it 100, 120, and it should give us a similar sort of shot in back over the trees into the pin. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. It was the right play. So we're now coming in from just near the front forward tees of the second hole that you've seen me play already. The pin is on this side, so it's not a good one to attack. Got the wind into, every part of me says with this wind and the distance of 140, I should hit a seven, but I just can't get over my head how much these are rolling on when they land. And even though this is sat down a little bit, I do think it's better for me to play a little bit short or if I get the flyer, then so be it. So we're just gonna try and go at the pin. Hopefully the wind will move it onto the front of the green. Oh, I've caught that heavy and a little bit right. Oh, it's hit a sprinkler head. So we actually, I don't know if we hit the cart path or the sprinkler head, there's two near each other and it's just kicked off to the back. It would have been actually a much better chip because there'd have been more green to work with and a flatter lie from where it would have missed. And now we've left ourselves another downhill chip in terms of the grass. Half of the distance to go through is thick grass. We're down the wind and then it's just gonna roll away from me. So again, I think I'm just gonna have to take my medicine here and just try and get it on the green and just give myself a putt at it. That's exquisite. I am delighted with that. That is as good as I can do it. I really thought about trying to land it just in that rough and didn't really think I would actually be able to do it. Delighted. I think it's just going to move on me a tiny bit from the left. So we're going to try and hit it inside left edge. Oh, it's moved. It's moved a lot. Oh, well. It's the hope that kills you guys, isn't it? Because I'd expected after the tee shot meant I had to play down the right. I was starting to think, don't deserve a par on this hole. And then you hit that chip, leave yourself a three footer and you miss them. Right, eighth hole, a lovely little short par three. From what I remember of this, you don't want to go long because it's a bit of a drop off. So therefore, apart from the bunker right, the miss is probably short left. So it's 130 yards today. That's a nine iron comfortably for me without the wind. With the wind, I'm still gonna play it. I know it's a bit strong up there, but I feel like actually my five wood and a couple of other shots I've hit into the wind have gone a little bit further than I expected, particularly when they've hit the ground. So I'm gonna try and hit a nine iron and just hope it pitches short, misses the bunker and rolls up or go straight into the bunker because I've flushed it and pulled it. So in the bunker, it's quite a big bunker actually. A little bit disappointed to be in it if I'm honest. If I wasn't pulled, it would have been just pitching just short and then getting there. I've got probably about seven or eight yards to clear the bunker. So I've got to carry it that and then it's gonna feed down to the green. So don't wanna be longest. So I've got to be a little bit careful of how I strike this. Oh, I've hit it nice. Come on, just come round, feed round. I'm delighted with that. We're about four or five feet for par. So it's actually about five foot that we've got left. Based on what the bunker shot was turning off of the slope, I think it's gonna come just a little bit off the left-hand side. I would love to sneak a par here. Raced it past. Uh, too aggressive on that line. Four. The par threes are truly beating me up today. Right, last hole on the front nine, par five, just goes up the hill and I think round to the right, you'll be looking at the drone flyover right now that will confirm that. The pylon that you can see on the left-hand side, I think that's about as far left as you wanna go where that tree is. I think there's a load of room to the right, although there's the bunkers up there, load of room to the right because the first hole is coming down that side. So if you're gonna miss, that's the way to go. I think the wind, once we get out of this little bit of shelter, should also push the ball that way as well, which considering I've been pulling my drives today, it's probably gonna go over there. Or you flail it absolutely miles down the left. I think we have to hit provisional. 
and then that one is as good as I can hit driver. Absolutely pured. So I unfortunately didn't find that first one. The second one's a great hit. It's actually just caught the edge of the fairway on the right hand side and I cleared all the bunkers that were there as well, which is a surprise, but I can't see the flag. I just know roughly where it is based on the clubhouse, which I think is just to the right, which is the way the wind's going. I'm just gonna hit a hybrid, which shouldn't get there. I don't think there's any trouble up there, but hit it down the left. And if the wind moves it right, or I draw it a little bit right, so be it, but that's what we're gonna try and do. That is an absolute golf shot. I have no idea if it's online or if it's good, but it is a great strike. That genuinely was one of the best golf shots I've ever hit of my life. And I'm gonna let you into a little secret. I've only ever had one legitimate eagle the whole time I've played golf. And it was a hole out second shot on a par four. I've lipped out on a par five for one, but this would be a second ball eagle for a par and it would be the most outrageous thing I think I've ever done in my life. It's a downhill slippery putt so I also feel like I need to be defensive with it ever so slightly but let's see what happens. Ah, I've missed it. Low. Oh it's chased on. Oh whoa and from one second feeling like you're gonna make the most outrageous second ball eagle for par I'm now left with a five footer back up the slope to try and save bogey. The adrenaline rush was real people. Thank God for that. I will take that as a second ball birdie. It's a tenth hole, 370 yard dog leg round to the left. From what I remember quite a bit of fescue covering the dog leg as well to stop you. Just got to try and aim at those trees down there in the middle. From seeing the pin when I came in I think it was sort of middle right quite tucked away as well so the closer you are to the dog leg the slightly better angle you've got in but I think just anything down there would be a good shot today particularly in this wind. Delighted with that strike really good I thought the wind would move it a little bit more I think it has as it started to drop out of the air but it's a great strike. So unfortunately I've just hit one of the best shots of the day and I didn't realize that there's a ditch that runs down the right hand side of this hole and I didn't realize that the dog leg cut in so much earlier. So it's just a bit of lack of course knowledge. Got 170 into the pin, down the breeze, and it's gonna bounce down the slope. So I'm gonna try and hit this left side of the green and just hope that it feeds in towards that pin. A little bit disappointed that I'm playing this as my third. And then I'm gonna chunk it absolutely nowhere and short my side myself over the bunker. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I don't know if this is a shot that I have in my armory at the moment. Hard pan lie, short-sided, bunker to go over, no room the other side. Every instinct of me is probably gonna to wanna to hit this a bit too hard. Come on, someone in the comments will be telling me to have some positive self-talk right now. Let's do that. And let's blade it across there. How has that not rolled out more? Keep rolling, it's done okay. So if you've got this far in the video, I'd love to hear what you think to how I've played today so far, because my impression is that I've hit a bad tee shot and a bad second shot on that par three. And besides that, I've not done a lot else wrong. Yeah, obviously I lost my tee shot on nine, but made a good second ball birdie to recover it. I've just been caught out a few times by not knowing the golf course and then just missing in the wrong spots. I think that is a triple bogey. So hole 11, another short par four. I think there's a ditch that runs across the front of this green here. There's a lot of fairway out to the left, but you've got to go tight to this tree line here. And otherwise you could be blocked out by those trees down the right hand side. Just going to hit a little hybrid, I think down there. Would love to hit the same one that we hit into that par five a few holes ago. Not as good a strike, but it's absolutely fine. Yeah, it's just bounced past the 150, probably gonna leave us about 140, 130 in down the hill. 
So this is going to be interesting. We've got 130 left of the pin. It's downwind, but the ditch, you've got to hit a carry at 115 to get over it, which for me is a good pitching wedge. I'm hoping for a bit of a flyer. I just think if I hit 9-iron, it's just going to pitch at the pin and out of this lie, just have zero spin on it. And as a result, just kind of roll for ages. And I don't really want that to happen. So I'm going to try and hit a pitching wedge and see what happens. It's got to go, get over. Oh, it's actually bounced short of the ditch and then bounced over it and just rolled off the green sort of midway up on the right hand side. Probably feels like the first bit of good fortune that I've had today is that that one kicked over the mound, or kicked over the ditch and, and rolled out to here. It's just come out dead. Got this for par though. It'd be a nice reply after what happened on the last. Ah, oh, just not hard enough. Great line. Now this is a stunning little par three. 105 yards today to that front pin. Just that one solitary bunker, 96 to carry that. Wind, I think is coming from about eight o'clock. So hard off the left and helping ever so slightly. So I've got a little gap wedge here, normally like a 100 yard club. and just hoping with that wind and the little bit of rollout that we're getting, that it will get us to the pin. bit clean, get over that bunker. Oh, it looks very good now. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you who have watched my What's in the Bag video might have noticed that I am using a different putter today. I've got the Lab Mez 1 in the bag. Now this was lent to me by my good friend uh, Billy McKenzie who's a tour pro, follow him on Insta. He plays on the Clutch Pro Tour which is like the level below the Challenge Tour in Europe. Just won on it a week or so ago as well, well done Bill. And uh, yeah, he's lent me this to have a go with knowing that I'm interested in buying one. I had a round with it the other day playing uh, a match for my club and I just felt like I hit so many more putts online, probably exposed my green reading deficiencies. And uh, yeah, really enjoying it. So hoping if we hold a few more putts, one like this might end up in my bag. No, you can't leave a four foot birdie putt down the hill short all that talking about the putter. So 13th hole is a really short par five. There's actually par fours on this back nine that are longer than this hole. And it is a little bit fiddly if I remember. It's so narrow off this tee and that's the reason I'm not hitting driver. There's trees down the left and there's a tree overhanging on the right. There is a bit more room out the right once you get down there. But I think you then have to lay up short of a ditch unless you are brave enough to hit driver or you can really scoot something down there. So I'm just gonna try and hit the five wood. It's down the wind. I think if we can hit a good one, we'll follow and chase it down there from the breeze and we should be okay. So tight to those trees, it's probably gonna hit them. Thoughts on the course would be really interested to hear what you think down in the comments. Obviously it's not as pure and peak as it would be in say the middle of May when we've just come out the spring in the UK and we've had a nice bit of water on it. It's just starting to dry out. But I've been really impressed by it. It definitely is a really good golf course that anyone can come and play no matter what your level is and enjoy it. I think better players will feel like they could build a score here and really could just either plot their way around or actually on some of the open holes just really attack it. Whereas on players like myself, I think if I came around here again, I'd make a few different selections and that probably would save me a couple of shots just by doing that alone. But yeah, been really impressed by it. Would like to just finish a little bit stronger. This is the first time I've played on camera with no second takes, nothing being edited out for about a year. So it was always gonna be a few bad shots thrown in there just with that little bit of nerves of playing on camera. You really don't know how much that adds knowing there's potential that 3,700 odd subscribers could watch this. But yeah, we're, we're doing okay. So just chipped out. I've got 196 in still from the chip out. The flag is directly behind the stump of the last tree that you guys can see on the left hand side. If I had a score going, I would just chip this up short of the ditch, play over it and just try and make five worst case six. But this is YouTube. I'm trying to make fun content for you. The score is not very good today. So I'm going to try my best to replicate what happened on nine and hit a nice baby draw with the hybrid round that corner and just chase up there. If I can get it over the water, 
with a little bit of draw it should just chase nicely this is a hero to zero shot so zero expectation but let's try and be the hero oh it's low it's got to get over that ditch oh it's miles over it it's now feeding around nicely sit look it wasn't a great high towering draw like i wanted but i think we're actually pin high and we've got a chance for the up and down a little nine iron and i've not hit that hard enough either Ugh. the problem with not hitting it hard enough is you don't get to see enough of what the green's doing enough of the reed i think this green is all sloping though from back to front so i've got this just outside the left i've raced it raced it and low so 14th hole another straight away par four we've got trees down both sides very tight alleyway if you're going to hit driver so i'm just going to hit a five wood seem to be hitting this quite well off the tee today and just try and leave myself sort of 150 ish in 160 in which i think with the way the course is playing should be like a seven eight iron today and just hope that we hit a good one here Just maybe hit that a little bit high and a bit puffy. Definitely puffed that five wood up a bit more than I wanted to. And as a result, I've got 180 in even to a front pin, which feels a long, long way still into the wind. But just because of how this course is playing, and because of me not knowing everything that's up there, I am still gonna try and muscle a six around the front edge and just see what happens. Ah, it's thin, it's gonna be in the bunker if it gets there. It is such a bad shot. Oh, semi shanked it. Right, short sided, up and down, desperately needed now. Brilliant. And even that's not got there. And that sums up the day. That sums up the day. Right, time for a mental reset after that last hole. And what better way than this stunning par three, the 15th. It's 154 yards on the scorecard, playing over the water to a pin that's tucked in the front right, playing just over 140 yards today. We're not on a great score. Let's try and hit it close. I've got a little AI and let's see what we can do. So unfortunately, I think I forgot to press record just before I played that second shot. So it was uh, sat down just behind where you guys are, short-sided. It was just another really fluffy sat down lie to a short-sided pin. And just after what happened on the last hole of me duffing it short, I was determined not to leave it down there. So I just made sure I got it up and unfortunately I've raced it all the way across the green because it just had zero spin on it. And we've now got this part here, which is a, uh, what, 40 footer for par. and absolutely would take two putts from here now, any day. Pleased with that, look, it's still two feet to tidy up, but it's without doubt one of the best putts I've hit all day for pace and line. Probably one of the longest putts I've hit all day as well. Sorry that you guys had to see my butt there, but didn't want to move the camera for the tap in. Right, three holes to go, and I must admit the next two are really tough. We've got two long par fours, both uphill and into the wind, both playing over 400 yards, like 420, 440 yards. So par and either of these holes will be great. They're playing almost like par fives at the moment, I think. And this one is incredibly narrow off the tee, and you've got to hit driver, or you've got to lay up and just accept it's a par five. But we're gonna have a go at it and see what we can do. Scorecard at the moment, I just had a little look at it and I'm seven over for 11 holes, seven bogeys I think and four pars. And then what we've got is four holes where I've played them in 11 over and that just sums up my golf at the moment. It's just two or three holes too many 
where I'm making a bad score and just crippling myself at the moment and just really not allowing me to build a respectable score at the moment. Right, good drive needed here. And it's absolutely down the middle. Probably a little bit high and maybe not my longest as a result, but pleased with that on a tough tee shot. Feeling a little bit incredibly hard done by here. Where you are placed, you are right on the edge of the cut of the fairway. And then there's another cut of fairway, another 100 yards up there, but this is almost like a bit of rough in the middle, which on a par four, I'm a little bit surprised about. I've got 192 to the pin uphill into the wind. It would be a five wood all day, but just because of this lie, I'm gonna try and hit the seven wood and just see if we can get one that just pops up there and maybe just chases on. I've absolutely flushed it, it's all over the pin. I think it's got up there, it could be incredible. It could be absolutely unbelievable, but it also might embarrass me and be 30 yards short. Now that might just be one of the best shots I've ever hit on camera. This is stroke index three on this course, 428 yards up the hill into the wind. And I've hit driver and then I've hit seven wood and I'm actually about 25 foot past the pin. The problem I've got is this whole green slopes from left, uh, from front, uh, from back to front. So this is a downhill birdie putt. And it's gonna be slippery. And I think it's just coming off the left hand side as well. Oh no, I've not hit it, not hit it. So scared of that slope. Yes, delighted with that four. That's a really good four. So another tough par four up this brow into the wind and it's still gonna be a long way in from there. And I think, you know, if we had seven wood into the last, I think we'll be lucky to have five wood into this one. And that's provided we can hit an equivalent drive. Right. another good drive much better on the back nine just bounding up that hill nicely hopefully should give us a good second shot in some absolute delight with that drive we've got it up the top of the hill and actually started to come down the other side and if it wasn't for the cut of the fairway here i think we might have got a few more yards out of it we still have i think it's gone about 245 based on a quick measurement so yeah really pleased with that up the hill into the wind in these conditions We've still got 200 to that flag, which is right at the back, and it is playing probably on the same sort of level as me. So I'm gonna hit a seven wood, same as I hit into that last hole, because I think the elevation is different. The only thing I'm worried about this time is I'm worried because we haven't, we're not hitting uphill, we might get a little bit more affected by the wind. But again, from this distance, I'd take anywhere near the green. Hit it so good again, just please be lucky. It's just a tiny bit short, and because the green's raised, it's just kicked off to the left. But two brilliant seven wood strikes in a row, and it's those last hole and a half that makes me think I can get down to single figures. Then it's those couple of holes where we've done silly things like a semi shank in the bunker and a duff chip that makes me think I've got a long way to go. So, all we've got to do now is for the first time in a few holes, hit a good chip shot. and I've not done that. My chipping has been woeful for the back nine. We've still got a chance for that four. We do not have a chance. I would have still taken a five there, look. A par par on those two holes would have been incredible. Par bogey, hit two great shots. Short game just let me down a little bit at the end. Right, final hole, just before I tee off, I wanna say a massive thank you to Talia and Becca, based here at Poulton's Golf Centre for helping to organise today. I really appreciate all your support and coordination. And also to Molly, who's the general manager here as well. She's been incredibly kind to me over the last year or so of the couple of courses that she manages, letting me come out and play them and film them for them. So thank you to all three of you. I really, really do appreciate it. Hopefully I've done a good job of showing off your golf course today, even if some of my golf hasn't been that great in places. So the last hole is a short par four back up to the clubhouse, up the hill, flattens out. I think it's about 290. So I'm gonna hit a hybrid just down the middle. I I think the bailout, if anything, is left because there's another hole there, which was the uh, first hole that we played right at the very beginning. And I'm hoping if we can just hit a hybrid down there, we'll leave ourselves sort of a wedge nine iron in 
and hopefully one final chance to make par. That's a great strike to finish on. I've hit the hybrid and the fairway woods generally very well today. I'm very happy with that. We've left ourselves 95 yards into this green, pins in the middle. I've just got a gap wedge and I just feel like it's just a nice smooth one of these and two putts and walk off would be lovely. It's a great strike. Yeah, it's pin high, just right over that bunker. I think I've got this putt to break 90, which I am a perennial 80 shooter. So to two putt and hit 90 would be a little bit of a shame, but for a golf course, I don't know very well, and which I've got some unfortunate misses in today with a couple of mistakes and my first time playing a whole 18 holes on camera for a year, I'll take it. But I would absolutely love to sink this for an 89. If you like the video guys make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you're not yet subscribed subscribe to weekend tour pros it's low all the way that's so disappointing <laughs> delighted we'll take that guys nice little par to finish really happy with those last three holes thanks for watching have a great day goodbye